Hi, I'm Mark Richard Adams, post-production professional. Come join me for another post demonstration on Colour Me In. Hi, and welcome back. So today I'm gonna to make a video on Premiere Pro uh, for AS11 delivery. Now I previously made an AS11 delivery uh, file in Avid and I showed you the process of that. The reason I did it actually because um, there was nothing on the internet. I could hardly find anything on Google about this. This is something that is really uh, uh, pivotal in the UK uh, and across the world in certain uh, regions too, AS11 delivery. Okay, um, so we're gonna do this uh, same, same process, but in a different NLE, and this one's gonna be Premiere. Obviously, other applications can do it too, uh, but we're gonna use Premiere today. Now, you gotta have a sequence, of course, and here's my sequence over here. And there are certain requirements that you need. You need lineup, okay, you need bars and tone, and you need a clock, and you need a program. Um, so, in the UK, a traditional AS11, HD, or standard definition AS11 file, will require the time code starting at 095930, okay? And you can see that will go through up until up until 095950 when the clock starts, okay, or the ident. And you can see the clock will then tick all the way through, and it obviously needs to be frame accurate. Everything has to be frame accurate, otherwise it will fail transmission, uh, quality control. Um, and that will need to go through to the 57, and then the program will start at 100 hours. Why 10 hundred hours? Well, it's a UK legacy thing. Uh, this is the way the UK does it. America, it's the other way around, it's 01. Um, but don't worry too much about that. Um, at the end of the program, you will need at least a five second freeze. In terms of UK delivery, it's generally the same. So you will have the program finishing here and then you will have a freeze and there's the freeze of five seconds all the way through to the end of the program. Okay, now there are a couple of other things you can do. Um, there is the fact that you might want to have an adjustment layer to put a limiter effect on it. Um, that is pretty normal. I mean, I could just do that now very quickly. Go file new and then go to uh, adjustment layer. We need an adjustment layer. Uh, that's fine. And I'm just going to drag that on top here. That's going to go all the way across. Now, do bear in mind when you're applying an adjustment layer to, to anything, certainly in this program, um, I'm going to be applying a video limiter effect here. So the adjustment layer is just a you know, a clear piece of glass, as it were, in the old in the old days, you know, which you're going to rest things in or on, like a composite layer, okay? But we're going to be looking now for an effect, and we need to find uh, the limiter, limiter effect. And there you go, video limiter uh, legacy. I'm going to use the legacy one, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, whack that on the top. What is that going to do? Okay, well, that's going to um, basically clip or compress the luma and the chroma, so it doesn't fall out of a, of a certain designated region. You know, we want this program to be legal and also to be Rec 709 safe. Okay, so we need to make sure that that limiter is, is applied. Okay, and if we click on it, you can see video limiter here. Uh, it's on the smart limit. I generally change this to chroma and luma. Okay, so it's gonna clip chroma and luma to these factors here. Now, now we've got a limiter effect on it. You won't see any, any notable difference if you turn it on and off. You may, if you put the scope up, if you actually went to window and put the scopes up, you may see a difference if you are enabling and disabling the top video layer, but generally you won't, not unless you've got some incredibly strong colors burning through. And in most part, you would have graded the sequence, so you would have kept it within uh, this, this, this color space here, okay? Um, so we're gonna turn that on. But the one thing we need to make sure of is that we don't want that limiting effect to go over the bars. You know, they're set, they're legal, okay? So that needs to be moved okay so it starts when the clock does okay we don't want that limiting effect to go over the bars okay those bars are set um so here we go we have everything in place everything is frame accurate now in avid avid creates a spanned marker from start to end in order to uh, segmentate the the program um separating it from the bars and tone in the lineup premiere does it in a, in a sort of similar way okay and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to just jump down to the first frame here Okay, I'm gonna make sure none of the clips are selected. Uh, and then I'm gonna to go to File and go to Marker. I'm gonna add a marker, there we go. And if we, there's the marker there. If we click on that, the marker should appear on the timeline, the above timeline, not on the clips. Open that up. And you can see that we've now got, um, uh, we can now add in some metadata. I'm just gonna add in Program here. And this needs to be a segmentation marker, okay? And you can actually set a duration. The minute I'm just gonna put 
three minutes, okay? But I'll need to move that because I don't know exactly where it is. Now you can see this pink box has appeared at the top, or this pink line has appeared at the top, that's good. We need to now make sure that we move the end of that to the end of the program, not the end of the freeze, okay? Okay, the freeze is something else. The freeze is, is there, so if the program and transmission dropped off, dropped off air, we've got five seconds leeway there, okay? That's the way that it works. So you can see that my end, so you can see that my end here of this segmentation marker ends at the end of the program, which is good. Okay, and that's about 30801. Good. And let's just double check that it starts at the right time. Good. Good. Right, okay. We're sort of ready to go. And if you open that up, yeah, we can double, yeah, that's fine. Segmentation marker. So we open that up and we can see that, yeah, the program, segmentation marker. We have now told Premiere with this segmentation marker where the program is. Okay, so when this goes to transmission, they will know this metadata will come through. Okay. So all we need to do is make sure that we have a start at the very beginning and uh, an end at the very end. But do bear in mind when we came to the very end that you don't want that frame. It needs to be the frame back. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, we don't want a frame of black on the end of this. Otherwise, it will fail a QC automatic quality control. Okay. So we go to the sequence. We file, export media. <clears throat> okay. And then we'll have the AS11. If it's not there, just go in the drop down menu and find it. And of course, we want the HD version. This is the HD show, but they do give you an SD option as well. I've never used it. Okay, um, now we want to make sure that the output name is correct. Okay, and we need to find a location. So I'm just gonna nip, jump into the finder and I'm just gonna jump onto my drive here. Um, and I am just going to create a new folder. I'm gonna call it um, the clock name, BSU underscore GOP. Zero one underscore zero 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 one a. Okay, there's the folder name there. So we're ready to go. Um, why is it called this number? Well, it's always the unique clock reference number from the channel. Okay, the channel will always give you this number. Uh, it won't be the name of the program. It will, it will be the unique clock number. Okay, so click on that, and I'm going to choose the name. I need to create it slightly. It's not version four, uh, and I need to choose that folder. Click on that, and away we go. Now, there are a few other little bits and pieces that we need to do. Firstly, we need to go to the metadata here. Now, the metadata, this is critical for an AS11 delivery, critical. There's lots of stuff going on here, but we're looking at the core DPP, UK DPP and the structural. So in the core, you will see all the descriptive metadata. Now, the one way that I, uh, I use this is that I just jump very quickly into uh, text edit. And I basically, I just, I've made sure I've got it written down before I even get here. So Descriptive metadata, um, series title, it's, it's going to be Unipro. So I'm just going to jump there, I'm going to copy and paste that in. And then I know the program title is an VT. And the, the episode title number is going to be this um, production number. And the audio track layout, let's have a quick look, is going to be, it's going to be uh, EBUR 48.1a, which basically just means um, it is stereo one and two, blank three and four, okay? Um, there are specifications on each technical requirement, which will tell you which ones these mean, but that, that's basically stereo channels one and two only, okay? Uh, primary audio language, going to be English. Um, there are closed captions. There's nothing there. Uh, okay, so we've got that, that information there. Now I'm just gonna jump into um, the UK DPP um, and I'm going to get the production number again. I'm just gonna wipe that in twice. Slightly different to Avid actually. There's different metadata fields. And bear with me, this does take a little while to do. Hence why I sort of write it all out beforehand. Synopsis, just really brief synopsis here in there. Originator is going to be uh, Unipro. Uh, copyright year is going to be 2021 and 05 and uh, 15. I don't need other identifier. The, the little asterisk here means the ones you have to populate. Genre, um, I think I put something down for genre. Yeah, I'm just going to say education. 
distributor is going to be YouTube. Picture ratio is going to be HD. It's going to be 619, 1.781. It's pretty standard. Uh, now, PC bench. I'm going to leave this for the moment, but generally I would use VidCheck. You know, if you were, if you were delivering to channel, you would have to have a, a PAC check through uh, a manufacturer like VidChecker. Okay, I'm going to put no for the purposes of this. But if you generally you would, you would have like VidChecker, and you'd have the you'd have the full manufacturer and the version number. Okay, video comments. I'm going to say. Um, Good quality, you know, you could be more extensive with that. Of course, it's not, you know, you just, just, you know, flag up some important things in there. The order standard is going to be EBUR128. That's generally what you would have for UK delivery audio comments. I'm just going to put good quality as well, and various other things as well. Okay, uh, audio description. Um, don't need any of that. So a lot of the stuff you don't need, you will need a contact email. So I'll just put Mark at test.com it's not my real email of course and telephone number there we go okay so structural this should come through anyway now there's quite a few bits and pieces there okay uh, you want to check it before you send it so I'm happy with all of that so I'm happy with all of that I'm gonna click OK I've choose the format the codec the location uh, the metadata was tagged export this is now going to make our AS11. Okay, and we're done. Now, I'm going to bring that file back in just so we can have a quick look at it. Um, I'm going to go to import. I'm going to navigate to that drive. I'm going to navigate to that folder. And there's the file there. Bring it in. Open it out. And here we go. And you can see, look, it's actually brought in that segmentation marker as well, which is great. And that's exactly what the channel will want to know. About this and, and ultimately that in we can actually move it inside of uh, Premiere as well, um, but we don't want to do that. Uh, let's just have a quick look if we expand this out. Let's just have a look at some of the metadata that's come through. Hopefully, some of it will be here. We might need to very quickly just turn on the metadata settings here and we go through. Yeah, look here, our metadata is coming through nicely. Good, excellent, really, really nice. Yeah, it's looking good. Ultimately, with AS11s, the metadata is the key. You get a spelling mistake, you get a, a double space, it will fail. It'll fail the AQC, okay? If you've got a black frame on the end, it'll fail. If you're not actually in sync with your clock, as in the tick of your hands is, is, not, is out of sync, it'll fail. Uh, if uh, the gamut is too high, too hot, the luminance is too high, it'll fail. Um, there are so many things, legalities, that you need to get right with this file. And probably the biggest thing is the metadata. You know, the, the, the metadata is critical. And ultimately, the metadata of this uh, segmentation marker here, because that is what the AQC will look at. That's the program. That's what will be transmitted between those two markers. The lineup and the clock is irrelevant, but it does need to be on the file. OK, I really hope you enjoyed that video. See you soon. If you enjoyed that video, give me a like or subscribe. Put in the comments down below demos you'd like to see next, but catch you next time.